Hi everyone, it's Justine. What makes a nice wardrobe that you will not get bored of? It's a question that comes back at every season switch. You're putting your winter stuff into boxes of storage, you're unpacking your spring summer clothes and going, should I keep this? Did I really buy that? So here are my eight tips to help you build and keep a stylish wardrobe for yourself. Spoiler, these tips work no matter the season and for every style. Number one, focus on high quality basics. Basics doesn't sound sexy. People tend to neglect the basics and focus on finding the statement pieces in a wardrobe. But statistically, the basics, even though it doesn't sound sexy, are the pieces that you're gonna wear the most often. So do focus on the basics. That can be a white t-shirt that has the perfect shape and the perfect material for you. It can be a pair of jeans that fit your body type impeccably and that feel like they were tailor-made for your personal body. It can be any piece that you tend to wear quite often and that is combinable with pretty much everything else in your wardrobe. If you do find that perfect shape cut material, get it in several colors so that you can mix and match it with the rest of your wardrobe. It's the kind of piece that you tend to wear a lot, make it a good one. For instance, this is the tensile v-neck top from my own line. Tensile is a very soft material, it falls nice and heavy. It looks silky, that's a special way of treating the fiber. It doesn't feel like a simple t-shirt. I launched that one in four different colors exactly for that reason, for people who do a capsule wardrobe and that need great basics. Number two, timeless over trendy. The same rule goes for those sexy eye-catching pieces that you're seeing in shops on the racks, <laughs> like an oversized, completely monochromatic hot pink suit or an old denim look very trendy right now because it's reminiscent of the 90s and we're in a huge 90s revival. Pieces like this are trendy, not timeless. Rule of thumb, every new garment that you consciously choose to add to your wardrobe should be wearable and attractive and cool in five years from now. So ask yourself the following two questions. Number one, do I have more than just a couple of occasions to wear that garment? Second question, would I have worn this five years ago? This color, this pattern, this material, whatever. If you answer no to these questions, it's very likely that you're not gonna like that garment anymore in a couple of years from now. And so if you take this garment from the rack and take it home with you, it's gonna hang in your wardrobe, you'll have a full wardrobe and the syndrome of, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> Go for timeless, not trendy. Number three, color up your standard look. I call that my uniform. Let me explain. Most people, me included, for sure, tend to wear and repeat the same kind of look of uniform, of standard outfit, on most days, because <laughs> it's practical, I can get ready quick and easy, um, it fits my body type, it's flattering for me, it's easy to care for, <laughs> hello, I'm a pragmatic person, right? But it gets boring because it's too easy. This doesn't mean that you should ditch your standard outfits that already works so well for you. And also, if you already sort of have found your style, you might have quite a hard time trying to invent a completely new style for yourself, rather than the shapes and the cuts that you already naturally gravitate towards. My tip is make it a habit to look for ways and tricks to elevate that standard outfit. Meaning, don't replace the clothes, look for ways to pimp that outfit, I should say, with a nice colorful scarf, jewelry, a different kind of makeup, a hair accessory, it can be anything. That will multiply your number of possible outfits and bring back the fun of curating your look without needing to add any garment to your wardrobe. Number four, playing with textures. That's so important and often overlooked. When I speak about the topic of capsule wardrobes on my channel, Often, the first objection that comes is, yes, but capsule wardrobes are boring because it's only basics and it's the same three neutrals, so it color-wise it's boring and everything kind of looks the same. It's only true if your wardrobe is missing textures. A stylish wardrobe needs a whole range of different textures. For instance, you can make sure that your wardrobe contains different weave types, different knit types, also different knit sizes. For instance, these fabrics here are all woven. Those fabrics are all knitted, yet they look dramatically different, you'll agree. And by the way, feel free to make a screenshot of that 
page for later referral if you need a little bit of help in terms of fabric types. The thing is, if you have enough variety in terms of textures in your wardrobe, you could do a monochromatic look every day, just varying the textures. People would still notice that you're dressed completely differently every day. That's how people are going to perceive it. And incredibly sophisticated. Because by the way, it's easier to make a very stylish first impression on people through what you're wearing. If you have limited color palette and varied textures, rather than if you have the opposite, which is multiple colors and prints and whatnot, on the same two kind of jerseys. It's really a thing. Number five, one of my favorites. Mix and match different styles. A wardrobe is perceived as boring when it's too easy to expect it by you and by others. So when I'm saying mix different styles, the easiest way to do that and surprise people is, for instance, to mix different decades. 2000 norm core plus 1950s accessories and makeup. If you do that, people will see there is definitely a creative decision there and a combination of two different fashion eras. It's curated, definitely. It's not a common combo, so people will perceive that as a very personal touch. Actually, people on the street will say things like, that woman's got style, she has a point of view, which is what you would read in Vogue. Having a point of view is very commonly associated with having style. Another example, romantic plus goth. The cuts are full of tulle and very soft, airy curves, but the color palette is dark and the hairstyle highlights that as well. This is something you would see more commonly, but it's still a very personal touch. Number six, layering and proportions. These two fit together. You'll see why in a second. Consider Fashion Week outfits. Fashionistas who let themselves be photographed on the streets before a fashion show, that kind of crowd. They don't usually wear just one or two garments. They wear three, four, five plus to create a mood. So I'm not saying that you should go all fashion week in your outfit decisions, because that's pretty bold. We'll agree <laughs> on that, I'm sure. But there is something to learn in the level of curation of the outfits. Adding at least one more layer, somehow, gives you more options in terms of stating your style. Mixing proportions is also a way of making an outfit stand out. For instance, wide leg trousers with a skin tight turtleneck sweater, one of them being monochromatic, the other one with a print. Just an example. Number seven, good fit is always better. And I'm saying always, because a garment can look amazing on the rack, in the shop, and like a potato bag on you. Raise your hand if you've had that before. <laughs> I surely did. <laughs> The problem, very often, is simply the fit. I'm going to add a caveat to that. There are some types of garments that do not work for this or that body type. But most of the time, really, a little bit of tailoring goes a long way. For instance, have your clothes corrected by a tailor. The hem on your pants, the waist on a jacket. Make sure that you wear the right size, always. If you have a different size on the bust and the hips, you're buying a top or a blouse like this one, take one size up because you need space for the breasts, but then from here downwards, have the side seams taken in and it would look fabulous. Number eight, take good care of your clothes. Remove peeling delicately <laughs> from your wool sweaters. Don't wash all your clothes with the same detergent. You cannot wash colorful garments with the white detergent. You cannot wash black garments with a colorful detergent. You need one for white, one for color, and one for black. I hope you know that. Store your clothes properly. And I'm not talking about winter storage. I'm speaking of in your closet. For instance, knits don't like to hang on a hanger because the shoulder seams will grow apart in width. And if the knit is a little bit heavy, the structure and the, the weight of the material, it will stretch in length. So it will be too long, too wide. The fit is completely messed up and also it's not so good for the, for the wool fibers. If you want to learn more about how to take good care of your clothes and wash them properly, you'd be surprised. I'm sure that you learned something in that video. I have one. I will link here. Um, I will link it here in the card and down below in the video description. I think it's necessary mandatory knowledge for your clothes to last longer and also to look good for longer. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for your support. Since you watched until here, before you go watch something else, 
subscribe to this channel and you'll get my upcoming videos as well notified. I'm working on new trend boards for spring summer fashion, a classic on my channel. How to spot counterfeit handbags, a useful one if I may say so myself, and a couple others um, that are in preparation at the moment. I will see you again on Wednesday 5pm Paris time. Until then take care. Bye.